Ahoy there, you swarthy bilge rat scumbags. Captain MC Murr here. Fancy and a look at a new release published by our friends at NIS America. Neo Atlas 1469. We're gonna dual wield cutlasses. We're going to heave throwing axes. And we're gonna slice with daggers. Okay, actually, we're not going to do any of that. You see, Neo Atlas 1469 is not exactly what it appears to be. And yet, at its core, it's a lot of what it appears to be. But I have to admit, looking at this game was a very strange experience. It really was not what I was expecting. And that's tough to explain without just diving right in and looking at the game. But that's what we're here to do. Let's get started. Neo Atlas 1469. You know, it's important to note that this game came out almost a year ago in Japan, and it's already available on Steam here. And from the mixed reviews, I can tell I wasn't the only one surprised at what this game actually is. You know, I jumped the gun assuming that this was cut from the same cloth as one of my all-time faves, Sid Meier's Pirates. It wasn't. In Neo Atlas 1469, you are running a trading company and mapping the world in the process. Unfortunately, you have no identity in this, and that's just one of many levels of depth that this game simply gets by without having. It feels like a missed opportunity, you know, not having any sort of character creation. The game has no shortage of characters, however. You have your admirals, the king, and your trusty advisor, Miguel. You better hope you love Miguel because he never goes away, and he never stops talking. He takes you through a lengthy, albeit necessary, tutorial, and he just never stops. He's like that friend that's watching you play something and telling you what to do at every single point. And the faces he makes, dear God. He does this hooty, open-mouthed grin where he's holding his head in his hands. Then he gets this Peanuts gang thing going where you get a huge open mouth and nostril shot. So far there's no way to throw him overboard, but I haven't given up hope. Each admiral has their own strengths and weaknesses, and initially, that decides the roles they will play. They can all improve in the different areas, but I see little advantage to not just playing to their strengths. They will all explore and chart the world, cutting through the fog of war that covers the unexplored areas and then returning for your approval or disapproval. Disapproval means that you disagree with the charting, and exploring again may yield different results. At the end of it all, your world map may look much different than the actual maps we know today, which is kind of a unique and realistic feature of this game. I overestimated the level and or significance of piracy in this game. You will run into pirates, but I hope they get cooler looking than this guy. He looks like some goofball off a of Captain D's kids meal box. Combat basically consists of who has the higher battle power number, lightly salted with possibility of crits and or fumbles based on a luck stat being figured in. But so far, it generally seems to be as simple as the win going to the higher battle number. Now, there are Krakens, which, I mean, it's not like that's never been done, but that's pretty cool to see here, you know, considering. There's even a King Kraken, and it takes multiple encounters to whittle these things down. But again, in my opinion, lack of any manual element to the combat really does take away from the experience, and it just seems like another missed opportunity. While your admirals will map the world for you, you do the exploring, simply by moving a cursor around. Treasure chests represent artifacts, books, and other things you'll be paid for finding, and that may provide other benefits. Finding new cities allows you to relocate your admirals, allowing them to extend their reach and their exploration. Cities have resources, and it's up to you to create profitable trade routes between these cities based on the value of the resources and the length of the round trips made. Pirates will also interfere with trade routes if they get in the middle of them. 
You're constantly speeding up time to get events and exploration to resolve, but you're also charged with making every day count. The king constantly pressures you to explore, and your annual bonus reflects just how much you accomplish in that time frame. This game was only published by NIS America, and originally by Arc System Works. It was developed by Art Dink who has definitely been around and unbeknownst to me has earlier Neo Atlas games on their resume. PS2 games that look like earlier versions of this. So regardless of what I think about any given part of this, this is an established thing. Regardless of the fact that Neo Atlas is an established franchise, it still feels like this game could evolve in some of its departments. And 1469 would have been the chance to do this. I would have liked to have swung some swords, placed some troops, and seen some scarier pirates. The art style and depth of the game as it sits are, to me, almost reminiscent of educational games we used to play back in elementary school in the early 80s, back when good behavior would get you 10 amazing minutes on an Apple IIe computer to play some Number Munchers, Odell Lake, or some Oregon Trail. I'm showing my age there, but obviously I can't look at this game through nostalgia goggles. All that said, I'm intrigued enough by the exploration alone to want to keep playing this, and though I can't give it perfect marks, that's merely my personal take. There's almost certainly a demographic for this kind of product, and as the game progresses, it may pick up pace and end up growing on me. So there you have it. Neo Atlas 1469 launches on the Nintendo Switch on April 9th. And you know, I have to admit, I've been stoked for this game since it was announced, but I thought I knew what I was getting into, and I didn't exactly. I didn't. Uh, that's why we want to take a look at these things. And I want to thank NIS America for a review copy of this game. I want to thank all of you for taking a look at this game with me. Now we know where we're at with this thing, okay? There are some very unique things that this game does at its core, but there are some elements that I think should have also been at that core that are not. It leaves me wanting to swing my own sword. It leaves me wanting to sail my own ship. I dig the simulation aspect to a degree. There are some things I wish were a little more in-depth than they currently are, and maybe that changes. Again, I'm intrigued enough to keep playing at this point. You know Pirates is my jam. Not just any Pirates, Sid Meier's Pirates. My jam. Love that franchise. Love the way those games were. You know, it, it really makes you think. And it's Pirates, which is always cool. But I'm intrigued enough to keep playing and see what kind of depth this game gets as it goes. To, to be fair, we're not very far into it. This game is ready to provide you hours upon hours of what it is if you're ready and willing to undertake that challenge. So I'm interested to see what else this game brings to the table. But as it sits right now, you can see what it is and if this game is for you. And is this game for everybody? Absolutely not. You know, it wouldn't be for everybody if it was exactly what I thought it was initially. Those games are not for everybody, but they are my jam, personally. Again, this is a very different spin, though. This is, this is something I wasn't prepared for. Kind of a curveball. But now, again, you see what it's doing. You can make a decision if this game is for you or not. We're going to keep playing. I want to take a look at more in-depth live streams with this thing. I want, to, I want to show you how it evolves as we continue on there. Hope that you will join me on that journey and we'll just see what else this unique title is bringing to the table. Something that we can definitely do right here on the MC Mer Show. And I want to know what you thought about what you saw here today. I want you to leave me something in the comment section below because you know that I love getting a conversation going with you right here on the MC Mer Show. Talk to Captain MC Mer and make sure that you drop a like on this video. I hope that you did like this video. And most importantly, if you have not already done so, I hope that you're going to subscribe to the MC Mer Show. Be a part of Mer Nation. We're rising up all the fantastic things that we have going on right here on the show you need to be a part of. Of, and make sure that you smack that notification bell so you are always the first to know when new content goes live. You know that I love making it for you. NC Murr signing out for this fun review, and I will see each and every one of you again next time. Bye.